on video four of Revit to Real, we're going to start looking at pushing things um, from our site context model for our massing model to um, our MakerBot Replicator 2 that we have, our 3D printer. And um, while there's a lot of different 3D printers out, I certainly can recommend the Rep2. Um, we, we have two of them at our university, at Drew University Hammond School of Architecture. Very happy with both, both of them. Um, lots of prints. Uh, of course, they break. Everything breaks. Um, especially when it's new technology, but for the most part, they're very reliable uh, and, and get us really high quality models very quickly. So it's definitely one of those things that I send people in that direction. The process, um, moving things from Revit to a 3D printer is fairly similar um, for every other uh, 3D printing software that I've seen though. So the, the techniques for this should work for just about any printer that you might have that you're working with. Um, in particular, if you're working with FDM extrusion, um, different files, uh, you know, a, a higher end like an object or something like that, that's going to give you a, a higher end model um, in some ways, a higher end model. Um, uh, slightly different process, but but not terribly so. So the first thing that I need to do is get all my masking models back. So I'm just going to go reset temporary hide and isolate. And um, one quick thing to point out: every object that I've made here um, is different. Um, each time that I made a component out of these, I did so uh, as going through um, component model in place each time for each different object. And the reason is, is, you know, the topography is different for each one of these, you know. So this object, even if I did them in a cluster of, say, five or six together, they're all at a different elevation um, so that I can maintain some level of accuracy with the height. Um, so, you know, if you look at the bottom of this, they're all punching through the topography a little bit. Um, but if I did them together, um, when I export them out, I'm actually going to have them you know, this building versus this building, um, if they were the same component, if they were the same group, one would be floating up above the build platform and one would be on the build platform. And that's going to give you a lot of problems with an FDM extrusion printer like a Rep2. So each one is isolated. And as I start moving them out to uh, MakerWare, which is the Rep2 software, um, it's a really simple process. Um, first thing I'm going to do is, let's just start with this guy right here. It's a pretty cool looking one. I'm going to select it, isolate it, and then I'm going to move to my add-ins, and I'm going to use the STL exporter for Revit. Now, this isn't something that's standard in Revit yet. I'm not sure why they make you add it in. Um, it should be sort of a standard piece right now. But um, the STL exporter, uh, you can grab off of the Autodesk Exchange site. Um, once you've logged into Autodesk Exchange, just search for uh, Revit STL export and it should pop right up. Uh, install that, uh, and that makes the process really simple um, because from this temporary hide view, you just hit STL export and save. And I'm just going to call this uh, massing one and save. Then I'm going to open up MakerWare. So this is a virtual representation of the build space in a Rep2. And what I always tell people is, you know, when you're working with FDM extrusion, you're going to get failures. Um, for us, the failure rate is really low. 90% of our prints are successful. Um, the 10% that aren't, on occasion, it's a hardware failure, a clog, or something like that. Usually, it's uh, something wrong with the model. The model isn't put together correctly. The geometry is not right, something like that. Um, or it's not put together correctly on the build platform. But that said, you want to be careful with how many things you group and how big of a print you do. You know, uh, a 14-hour or 15-hour print to me is a pretty ridiculous thing to do because your chance of failure and wasting, you know, 10 or 11 hours of print time is, is high enough that to me it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'll do things, I'll group some objects together, but only uh, in sort of a smaller amount. So I'll go add and then it was massing one, open. Um, I'm going to click don't scale. I want to do that manually, but I am going to move it to the center and I'm going to make sure, I always click and make sure that it's on the platform. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to scale this model because again, we're working at one to 40. So again, I'm going to go back to my little Excel spreadsheet and I know 
that for a 1 to 40 model, my percentage of scale is 63.475. 63.475 and enter. So I've got that in and it's scaled correctly for my 1 to 40 model. Now let's look at that formula really quick. That is um, taking my input right here and or it's actually I'm sorry it's taking my scale factor that I've already done the conversion for to inches and it's multiplying it by um, a factor to, to create um, an inches to millimeters conversion or a feet to millimeters conversion um, because the base unit in Revit is feet um, the base unit in uh, MakerWare is going to be in millimeters so let's go back into MakerWare and, um, oh, I'm sorry, let's go back into Revit. I'm going to reset my temporary hide and isolate. And now, if you have a fairly complicated model like this one, um, I definitely recommend doing this using some of Revit's features, not necessarily what they were designed for, but it works. I'm going to change this to existing construction now so that I know it's done. It's basically giving that a different view so I know, okay, that one's done. I can go on to the next one and not accidentally duplicate my efforts. So I'm going to select the next model. I'm not going to do this with all these, don't worry. I'm just going to buzz through them really quick here. Isolate element, export, save, massing 2. Should probably come up with a slightly better file name for this, but that's okay. Massing 2, move to platform. My scale factor was 63.47. 63.47 and now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control L that auto arranges in what the nice kids at MakerBot say is the fastest way to get the print done so it's going to rotate and position them on their on your build platform and each time I bring a new object in I, I run this just so I can kind of understand how much room that I have left for for each build so let's add one more in. let's go through the process one more time reset the temporary hide and isolate change my phase to existing let's select one more object shouldn't isolate the category did that wrong select my object and let's isolate the element there we go STL export save massing 3 add Massing 3, move to platform, 63 point, my memory is not good, 63.47, 63.47, control L, and you can start to see these objects coming together. Now, that said, that object does look strangely small to me. Let's just compare those two together and rub it really quick. Yeah, that one should actually be larger. I'm guessing that I uh, accidentally scaled that down twice by exiting MakerWare. I'm gonna, so I'm going to delete this guy really quick. Let's add it in one more time. Things to watch for when you're when when you are doing this process. Uh, it's easy to get lost, sort of in the translation of things. Point four seven. Enter. Control L. The other option from Control L is Edit Auto Layout All. That's essentially the task that I'm having MakerWare do for me. So I've got three of these objects now on the base. Uh, as I was printing these out, typically I would do five to six um, total. The next thing that I always do is um, I'm going to go ahead and run through the make process. Um, make um, typically I always try and run things on the lowest resolution. Um, we've had great luck with the low resolution standard. Obviously, um, you're getting a high resolution. Um, the thing that's changing is the layer height from 0.2 millimeters at low, it's 0.3 millimeters. So in particular, if you have a sloped surface or something like that, um, the more slices is going to give you a smoother transition. But for the most part, um, in terms of time in and product out, 
I have been really happy with the low setting. Um, the great debate on rafts and 3D printing. I always print a raft first. Um, it is really rare that I print without a raft. The raft is a layer of filament. It's actually about three layers of filament underneath your model. This is going to add about 20 minutes, 15 minutes to every print. And it's going to expend some additional filament as well. Um, so each print's going to cost a little bit more money. But in terms of money, you're talking about cents, um, you know, change, not dollars. So uh, the, the benefit of doing a raft is a very smooth, consistent surface that you're building on top of. For us, far fewer failures in terms of printing, a print that's much easier to move from the build plate. And um, the rafts are so much more forgiving in terms of how level the build plate is. So when you have 200 students pounding away on this, or if you have uh, a Rep2 or a 3D printer in an office and you have multiple people all sending files to the 3D printer, a raft is going to give you fewer errors, in my opinion, on your builds. The thing with the raft is that you have to make sure that you pull it off of the raft immediately after the print is done. The longer that an object sits on a raft, the more difficult it's going to be to remove that raft from the object. I typically have a timer set and that timer is going off five minutes before the 3D print is done so I watch the end of the print when it comes down I pull it off the build plate and immediately pull the raft off. If it doesn't pull off like Velcro something is going wrong with it. Usually they come off very very easily for me. So with the raft set um, and the check pre preview before printing I always run a preview. I'm gonna click export because I always want to do a quick inspection of what I'm building. So you can see this layer right here is the raft and then I've got um, the solid build of my objects and if I pull those layers down you can see the infill pattern. Um, the preview uh, as we start exporting more uh, final models from Revit the preview is going to become increasingly important because uh, that preview is going to tell you what is going to print well and what isn't. Um, and we'll go through that in one of the later videos in this series um, to help you kind of understand and discern what's going on there. So from this point, I'm going to, going to go ahead and click the export button. And we'll call this massing one through three. So it's going to create a .x3g file, and that's what I'm going to put on the flashcard to uh, to print, uh, to install, basically move from my laptop to the Rep2 and click Save. And then you can see a weird little bug um, that, that we've kind of found in MakerWare. After running the preview, it has a tendency to send our files off into nowhere, into La La Land. Um, so I have, you know, two of my objects missing, so uh, just edit, undo, and they're back. Um, MakerBot guys, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, not a big deal, but it's kind of weird. Um, so from there, that file is ready to send to the 3D printer. So this is an example of one of the massing models that we've printed out on the Rep2 from MakerBot. And what you're seeing right now is that first layer of the raft, uh, which is typically three layers depending on the settings that you're using. Um, the second layer of the raft, so the first layer is a really thick line uh, that's designed to be flexible so you can bend the raft off of the final print. Um, the next two layers, uh, one's thin and one's a little bit thicker. Uh, the next piece uh, that you're seeing on screen is the build of the massing model uh, with the infill pattern. That's a 10% infill pattern that we're using and the final model on the raft. Um, no, we always get to the models really quickly after, after they're done um, so that they peel off the raft easily. If it doesn't come off the raft like that, you've probably let it sit way too long. It should just pop right off, uh, kind of like the, the final point. massing model um, with the white coat of paint over the rigid foam insulation that we cut on the CNC. The massing models at 140 were all printed out on the MakerBot Replicator 2 in the clear or natural filament. A little bit not sure whether I like that better than the white, but I wanted to do something different. And the final massing model for the design you can see there in the center.